when you ain't got nothing else to say. Old folks used to say if I had a thousand tongues, I still couldn't thank them enough. It's funny how if you tell them thank you enough, all of a sudden tears will start rolling down your eyes. Because as you take it telling them thank you, your mind starts to think back in wonder. How I made it over. heart begins to fill with thanksgiving and your spirit begins to rejoice and you can't help but lift up holy hands by just telling the Lord thank you it's a blessing and a privilege to lift up the name of Jesus to consciously know and be aware from whom your blessings flow. Think about the people who just taken for granted God's daily mercies and daily graces and they don't even know how they breathe in God's good air but you are privileged enough to say thank you Lord for another day's journey. Thank you for health and strength. Thank you for a sound mind. Thank you, Lord. In fact, I can still put one foot in front of the other. The stuff we take for granted every day. Folk don't even know. They just walking in the mercies of God. You ought to be grateful that you know for yourself how good God has been. Thank God you know how good he's been. Thank God you know it wasn't the alarm clock. Thank God you know it ain't because of how smart you are. Thank God that you know it ain't because of how slick and cunning you are. But God's grace is sufficient. I'm glad I know that for myself. I'm glad I'm not like this all the time. But rather I'm like this. Hallelujah. Y'all better quit taking my God for granted. You better quit treating God like he's like us or something. I understand how you might treat some people in your life because they've shown you how to treat them. (laughs) But this God is worthy of our thanksgiving, ain't he? He's worthy of our thanksgiving. So since you know better, don't come in God's house and sit there like God has not been good to you. Don't sit there, don't sit there like he hasn't blessed you all week long. That he hasn't made a way for you all week long that he hasn't shielded you from danger seen and unseen all week long. 
and you got your nerve to claim you know him, to claim you love him, and to come to in his house, in his sanctuary, and you can't wave a hand or you can't shout hallelujah and you can't say worthy is the Lamb of God. How dare you? You got your nerve. You got your nerve. You better not be one of my mama's children or grandchildren. Walk in her house and not acknowledge my mama. You ain't got sis enough to say hello. How you doing? You been in here for an hour. You not once said thank you, Lord. Like you done something just because you showed up. Don't nobody care you sitting in here. You ain't doing nobody no favors or scoring some points with God. You owe God. You, you owe God. You ought to know better. We don't blame them out there. They don't know no better. He's been that good. He's been that good. He's been that good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Paul's second letter to the Corinthian church, Paul's second letter to the Corinthian church, chapter 1. Chapter 1 of 2 Corinthians. Chapter 1 of 2 Corinthians. I want to look quickly at verse 20. <clears throat> Second Corinthians chapter 1. I want to look at verse 20. If you have it, please say amen. amen. If you need a moment, say hold on a sec. I got one hold on. Second Corinthians chapter 1. And verse 20. Are we there? The scripture reads, for all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen unto the glory of God by us. Amen. I just want to say a few brief words about the promises of God. They're simply about the promises of God. Child of God, I don't know um, how much promises mean to you in this life. But one thing is for certain, what people say they're going to do matters. It matters. If you say you're going to do something, then you ought to do it. If you're not going to do it, then don't say you're going to do it. Because if you fail to do what you say you will do, then you lose what? Credibility? And you lose integrity. And then you want to expect people to trust what you say. You're like the one who cried wolf until there was really a wolf. And then nobody believed what came out of your mouth. Child of God, I, I, 
one thing that is for certain, a promise, yes, it comes from the person and it goes to someone, but make no mistake about it, the promise stays with the person who made the promise. No matter when they made the promise, no matter to whom they made the promise to, when it boils down to it, they're going to come back and say, did you do what you said you were going to do? That's all that matters. It don't matter when you said it. It's all you're going to do what you said you was going to do. That's what matters with us. That's what matters with us. I think for us, it's not necessarily what a promise is, but more so who made the promise. It's more so about who made the promise. The reason why, you know, forget about, well, let's not forget about it, but let's just put to the side for the moment, you know, adultery and sin against God. But the personal hurt that comes from one stepping out on another in their marriage is because they trusted the vow that you made. The hurt comes from the fact that basically they feel like you just lied to my face. Not only did you lie to me, you lied before the preacher and you lied before our family and friends. All you did was lie. If you wasn't going to do it, then why'd you say I do? The emphasis is on the person that made the promise. Beloved, I, I, I think the problem with us and the promises of God and the reason we have or we struggle, I should say, with trusting what God said is we don't put enough value on who said it. We, we don't put enough value on the promisor. We heard what he said. Yeah, but I'm not certain that I'm ready to put that much trust or belief in someone I can't even see. Help me, Holy Spirit. Because the truth of the matter is, we put confidence in what we know, or should I say, in those we know. If mama tell us something, mama knows best. If daddy said it, surely daddy's right. If the pastor said it, or if it came from the pulpit, it got to be from God himself. The emphasis that we make is in the value of the promise is the value we have on the person who did the promising. The promisor matters. The promisor matters. Why do, you, why do you believe what comes out of the pastor's mouth? Because for whatever reason, you trust what he says. Why do you believe mama? You've learned to trust mama. Why? Because every time you was hungry, she fed you when you was a kid. When your feet got too big for your shoes, she took you down and got you some more. That's why you trust mama. Why you trust daddy? Because he gave you money every time you needed it. Hopefully. <laughs> but the thing is, what I'm getting at is, you trust the promisor because they have a track record. Ha! Huh? They have a track record of doing what they told you they would do. Preach Holy Spirit. Beloved, when I look at the text, Paul here in the text was really, I, I, I like, I'm glad we have this that he penned here because really what he was doing was responding to the church at Corinth and letting them know where he told them he was going to come back by and pay them a visit. He was letting them know, I'm probably not coming now. 
because they had upset him with how they had been speaking ill of him. And so he let them know, like, like what are y'all, who y'all think I am? I ain't some fickle person. If I say I'm going to do something, then that's what I mean I'm going to do. And then he gave emphasis by telling them the word that I gave you, and I'm not making this up. You can look at verses 17 and 18, right before and 19, before you even get to verse 20, and he'll let you know exactly where I'm coming from. But he let them know, he brought up the gospel message that he was giving them as evidence that everything he was telling them was truth. So he gets to verse 20 and he tells them, because he's uh, kind of rebuking them, he lets them know, all the promises of God are yea. And in him is a man. Because when he gets to verse 1, 2, and 3 of chapter 2, he basically lets them know, I'm not coming because I don't want the ones who's supposed to bring me joy and who I'm supposed to rejoice in, I don't want to have to come and bring you sorrow. Because he was letting them know, if I show up, I'm showing up to rebuke you. I'm showing up to scorn you. So I'm just going to do it in this letter so you still love me. <laughs> so I, when I get there, I'll have the joy that I seek. I'm glad today. It's just like when Jesus, if it wasn't for them Pharisees ready to stone that woman, that Jesus would get down in the dust and start writing and say, he who was without sin cast the first stone. If they never was going to stone that woman, we might never have gotten that penned in scripture. If they never were speaking ill will of Paul, we might have never gotten this gem that he wrote here written in scripture that tells us that all the promises of God are yea. God is not like you and I to where he makes a promise and expects you to do something to fulfill the promise. See, the thing is, beloved, it's just like a covenant. In a covenant, you say you're going to do something, and the other party say they're going to do something. The thing is, me doing my part ain't contingent upon you doing your part. you supposed to do your part, and I'm supposed to do my part. Child of God, God has made us some promises in him that are fully dependent upon just him doing what he said. That's some good news for us. That's some good news for us. Why would Paul feel the need to bring this to their attention? It's funny because for some reason, we get to a place and we get circumstances that arise in our life and all of a sudden, we forget that we even have a God to call on. I can't understand because the thing is this, beloved, if we know the promises of God. See, it's only, it's only, it's only a couple of reasons that I can think of why we have problems trusting the Lord. And one is either we don't know what he said because you can't, you can't believe in what you don't know. One, you don't know what he said. Or two, you don't trust who said it. Them the only two reasons. Them the only two reasons. Either you don't know what he said to begin with, or you know what he said, and you don't trust the one who said it that he's able to keep it. Them are the only two reasons, beloved. Now, I'm inclined to believe as babies, because babies don't even know to trust mama until they've grown up a little bit. <laughs> Babies and don't even know where to put trust until after they've experienced some stuff. So I understand to some degree, but what I need you to do, child of God, is I need you to grow up a little bit. Because when we think about it, when we think about the, the, the promises of God, one thing is, is you can count on God's promise. You can count on God's promise. Why? One, because of God's character. How about because of who he is? See, like I said earlier, some of you think of God like he's a man. Like he cares about the things we care about. <laughs> like he thinks like us. Or he responds like us. 
or that he loves like us. He don't love like us because we only love those that do what? Love us back. He doesn't act the way we act because we don't do unto others the way we would want them to do us. We do unto others the way they do us. Be honest. I'm going to treat you the way you treat me. You going to talk crazy to me? I'm going to talk crazy to you. Don't be asking me for nothing when I came to you and asked for something you didn't give it to me. That's who we are. Quit lying to yourself. You too. God is not a man. He doesn't operate like us. The Bible says that his thoughts are so far above our thoughts and his ways are so far above our ways as the heavens are above the earth. God is not like you and I. Quit bringing him down to your level. He, is, he does not sin. He does not lie because he can't lie. Because he can't sin. He does not have a fallen nature. His nature is holy. His nature is right. His nature is just and his nature is good. Beloved, we also can count on the promises of God. Why? Because he does not change. Thank God for that. Because we as people, our minds and our thoughts and our feelings can change like the wind. As the wind blows, our thoughts can change in a moment. Circumstance change, your position changes. Society changes, what you think about what's right and wrong changes. All because of what society says. Child of God, God does not change. He's the same God yesterday, today, and he'll be the same God tomorrow. People want to say all the time, well, the Bible was written, Scripture was written over 2,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago. Beloved, I don't care because he's the same relevant God. It's just as relevant now as it was 5,000 years ago. As a matter of fact, the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. There ain't nothing happening today. There ain't nothing you dealing with today. It's nothing that's going on in our society today that they were not dealing with back then. Just as messed up as we are right now and it's just as messed up as human beings were from the beginning of time. Everything was going on that you see now. Man ain't no different. We just as fallen down as we were then child of God thank God that the one thing that stays constant is Jehovah circumstances change society changes people change you change we change but thank God that he remains constant thank God that even in the midst of of societal changes and societal behaviors and acceptance, thank God that we can still stand firm on God's law, on his judgment and his word. Thank God we can still stand on that. Thank God that his law doesn't change. Thank God that his blood and his saving power does not change. Thank God that he doesn't require no more of us now than he did 2,000 years ago. He still today doesn't want us to do anything but to love him and love our neighbor. Thank God that nothing has changed. Thank God that he is still the same person. And thank God for his infinite wisdom. This is why we can, I'm just going over why we can count on the promises of God. We can count on him because of his character. We can count on him because he does not change. And we can count on him because he is all wise. Because his wisdom comes from everlasting to everlasting. In other words, whatever he has decreed, whatever he has promised, whatever he has provided for you, whatever he has decreed to come to pass, God knows best. 
and he does all things well. He does not make mistakes. Everything he does is not only good, but everything he does is right. Why is it good and right? Because he can't do wrong. Everything he does comes from a place of love, not because he tries to love, but because he simply is love. That's who our God is. In his infinite wisdom, whatever he has decreed for your life, not only is it right, but it's good. I know that's difficult for some of us to grasp. That's difficult for some of us to understand. You say, Pastor, you don't know the situation that I was born into. You don't know what I've dealt with growing up. You don't know the hardships I've had in my life. You don't know what I've had to get over in my life. But baby, what I got to tell you today is God still set you up for a come up. That God still blessed you all the way through your trials and your storms. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here to tell me what all you've been through. And, 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 yes, that too was for your good. As bad as you think it was, as hard as it was for you to forgive the person that did it to you, some of you still ain't forgave them or moved on. As tough as that thorn is, I come to tell you even that is for your good. He said everything, all the promises of God are yea. You can count on the promises of God. Child of God, remember I told you that promises stay with the person. And because of who made the promise, because of who made the promise, not only can he do it? But because of who made the promise, I come to declare that he will do it. <laughs> Beloved, it's an insult to the credibility and to the integrity of the promisor if you doubt what he has promised. He told you that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Yet, you can't stand to be alone for two days. Child of God, he promised you that he will supply all of your needs. And yet, if he don't show up when you want him to, you take matters into your own hands and you bring about a deeper hole than where you begun. The problem, beloved, is for whatever reason, we still struggle to believe in he who has promised that he is able to do just what he said he's going to do. And see, when we get in church and we shake our heads and we say amen, but as soon as life hits us, as soon as the world happens to us, we forget everything that we heard from the man of God and we began to do whatever we feel is necessary to bring a remedy and some relief to our situation. But child of God, all we're doing is saying, Father, I heard you, but Father, I can't see where you're working. Father, I know what you said, but Father, you ain't moving fast enough. Father, I heard what you told the people, but for whatever reason, I'm still hurting too bad over here. I can't take this no more. My flesh is getting to its end. So I need you to move when I say move. So we don't want to trust God. 
that he'll do what he said. But you know what? Because when I find in the text his truth and his power is bound up in his promises. It is. The truth of God, the truth of the gospel is wrapped up in God's promises. Mm -hmm. Because see, if I look at Old Testament and New Testament, God made us a promise. The first promise he made us was in the garden. When he said that the heel from the woman's seed will bruise the head of the serpent. He made us that promise. He promised us throughout scripture. He made us promises of peace, promises of joy, love, goodness, forgiveness, promises of salvation, promises of sanctification, fellowship, hope, and glorification. And beloved, all of this is tied to the promises of God. All of this is tied to the truth of God. If Christ is not the truth, then these promises can't be fulfilled. If Christ is not the living, breathing, walking power of God in action, then these promises can't be fulfilled. It's all tied up into who he is. Not only who he is, but it's tied into what he has done. Hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus. Thank, thank God for Jesus because all was accomplished in him. And you say, well, how can it all have been accomplished in him if he wasn't born until 2,000 years ago? Child of God, the last I checked, my Jesus is eternal. My Jesus is from everlasting to everlasting. He's the first and the last. He's Alpha and Omega. Anything that was made was made by him and he has an everlasting covenant an everlasting promise that is written and ratified with his blood thank the lord that god not only came in 42 gen from down from 42 generations but he also accomplished exactly what he said he would do for if christ if Christ had not died, if Christ did not go to Calvary, if Christ did not dot every eye and cross every T of the law, if Christ failed in his mission, if Christ was not born of a virgin, if in the fullness of time he did not redeem me back to himself under the law, then the promises would still be lost. But thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for Jesus. In him are the promises, yea. In him, because he does not change, it'll never be nay. Ain't that good news? What, what do you mean? What I mean is, when Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. What he was also telling us is anybody who realizes that they've been paying on something they can't pay for, once you realize it, if you come to me and recognize that you can no longer labor anymore, he said, I won't turn you away. <laughs> Beloved, that's some good news. To know that no matter how dirty I am, to know that no matter what wrong I've done in my life, to know no matter what I did just on yesterday, if I come to Jesus just like I am, toe up, messed up, jacked up, just like I am, my stench won't run him away. No matter what I've done, he's still going to accept me into the beloved. Why? Because his promise is always yay. And he said in his word, they that call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. 
I contend that if you call on the name of the Lord today, he'll save you. I contend if you call on the name of the Lord today, he'll heal you. He'll come by your house. He'll come and see about you. He'll mend your broken spirit. He'll lift up your bow down here. If you can simply call on the name of the Lord. Why? Because he said he'll keep you in perfect peace. Because he said he'll leave, he won't leave you comfortless. Because he said if you call on me, I will deliver some help. That's what he said. That's what he said. And it's been ratified in his blood. That means the agreement was signed and sealed. It became a locked agreement at Calvary. Thank the Lord. It became a locked agreement at Calvary. At Calvary, everything God told us he was going to do, it was done. That's why Jesus was able to declare, oh, it is finished. Ain't nothing else to do, Lord. Hey, I, 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 ain't nothing else to do, Lord. As a matter of fact, Lord, you can go ahead and start calling them on home. As a matter of fact, Lord, you can go ahead and send your comforter and start drawing them on in. Go ahead and send the bailiff to the jailhouse and tell them the bond has been paid. Tell them the debt has been paid. Tell them it's time for them to be released. Tell them the sins have been forgiven. Tell them that the punishment has been taken off of their head. Let them know, oh God, that it accomplished all in me. That's all he was saying. And so then he said, because we believe all of that, because we believe all of that, if you believe all of that, he's saying your response ought to be amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said your response ought to be amen. In the Hebrew, the amen means a surety. It means a sure thing. Amen means to, to be trusted. But in the Greek, it means let it be so. It means so be it. It means verily, truly. In other words, beloved, what we're saying is, is that because of what God promised and because of what Christ accomplished, we can say, let it be so. God said, hallelujah, that he'll never leave you nor or forsake you. Let it be so. God said he'll feed you when, he, when you're hungry. He'll give you water when you're thirsty. He'll give me a shelter in the storm. God said that he'll fight my battles. God said he'll supply my every need. God said that he won't leave you comfortless. God said that he won't put more on me than I can bear. God said he'll be my friend. God said he won't sleep or slumber. And my response is amen. Amen. That's my response. My response is let it be so. Let it be so, not because of what was said, but because of who said it. Nah, because God is the one. And the last time I checked, he's never failed me yet. But because when I look back over my life, every time, Every time I tried God at his word, he was a promise keeper. When I was down in my spirit, laying awake in my bed at night, I cried on the name of the Lord. And what did he do? He came in the house, walked up the stairway, climbed in bed with me, got in the covers, and started rocking me. Back and forth. That's what he did for me. That's what he did for me. All I know is that every time I called on him, he did exactly what he said he'll do. I can't remember the last time I was hungry and he didn't feed me. I can't remember the last time I ain't had no money and he still didn't make a way for me. I can't, I can't remember the last time I was by myself, but I felt like I wasn't lonely. 
because God will do just what he said. Just what he said. If you don't believe God, then how can you believe that you're saved? If you don't believe he'll feed you, if you, don't, if you don't believe he'll keep your children, if you don't believe he'll make a way out of no way, how can you trust that you're saved? How can you trust that he can turn a sinner into a saint? How can you trust that he can take a low down dirty dog like you and invite you in at his table? How can you trust that if you can't trust that God will make a way? How can you do that? The promises of God. The promises of God. God don't say what he don't mean. <coughs> God don't say what he don't mean. And if God said it, it's already done. 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 It's already done, Sister Baker. It's already done. Why? Because God already promised it for you. God told you he's going to take care of your children. Don't worry about it. I know they're acting crazy out there. Don't worry about it. He told you he got them. He got them. He got them. Even if he got to take them out of here, he got them. Even if he got to take them out of here. See, some of y'all don't even realize that God taking them out of here is God answering your prayer. Because guess what? Now you ain't worried about them. Now you ain't... <laughs> but because you can't get past your feelings, you can't see how God is working. Get over your feelings. Get over your feelings. What's good for you ain't always what you think. That's right. Just like I ain't know them peas and green beans and okra and carrots was all that stuff was good for me but but mama knew mama knew I needed that good meat good food the Lord knows what you need you don't know no better <laughs> you, 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 don't, you don't know what you need you don't know what you need you know what you think you need you know what your flesh wants that's all you know come on brothers I'm through that's all you know 